this is a place where most of you are going to get in the future at some point. So it's good to know a little bit about it beforehand, but not too much, otherwise you might not do it. <laughs> no, it's okay. Well, what we've got to have done first, let's have a look at the things we have to have done before we can do this. So, so, this, so releasing the pain discussion um, really depends upon the fact that you've done these things. Okay? So what I must have done... Okay. First thing. What do you reckon it is? Any ideas? Just yell it out if you think you are. No, I can't. Oh, didn't hear any of it. <laughs> you, might, you might have said it, but. You must have developed some faith. Without faith, it's impossible for you to even contemplate dealing with your pain. And without faith, you can't have gone through this process. So if you, if you find when by the time you get to this process, you, or you think you're at this process, and you still feel scared of the whole thing, then you haven't done what's above it. Simple as that. Because once you've done what's above it, you're not frightened of it anymore. Alright? <laughs> Very, very simple. And faith is what draws you. Remember in this process, we learnt last night, in this process of deconstructing the facade, you learn faith. Right? So if by the time you've got, gone through that and you get to this and you still can't handle this, there's still not faith. Faith hasn't been developed yet. Faith is the key thing that's going to carry you through everything and you're going to need to develop it without fail. It's an essential quality. So, so you must have developed some faith. If you don't develop faith, no chance of you actually progressing, really. Okay. The second thing you must have done is accept your facade. I still notice many of you asking questions about your pain when you're actually asking questions about your pain associated with not getting your addictions met. Still haven't deconstructed the facade. Still even haven't accepted it. Still believe you can skip over it. Still believe you can get away with not having compassion for it. Still believe that you can have an awakening to sin without each and even knowing what, how you sinned. And that's not possible. So this is a part of your, this is step number one in your awakening to sin. If you don't perform step number one in awakening to sin, you're never going to get to step number two, awakening to sin. So very important that you've done that already. Before you can release pain, you'll need to have done that. Three, you have to have deconstructed your facade. In other words, you've gone through this process of getting out of denial and into awareness. You're now aware of, if not most, if not all, certainly most, of your physical, emotional and spiritual addictions. You've also deconstructed them. You've also stopped yourself from... You've found the emotional reason that drives their validation and drives your justification for you to get the addiction met and you've released the emotional reason for, for that. So that emotional reason no longer exists inside of you. And so you're not always justifying to yourself and others meeting <coughs> your own addictions. Right? You'll have found by that stage that most of your anger and rage has disappeared. So by this stage, a lot of your anger and rage has disappeared. You're no longer, you're no longer focused on just getting addictions met. You're not addicted to comfort and satisfaction anymore. You're okay. You, you've, by this stage, you've developed a, a feeling that you're okay with feeling emotion now. 
you're okay with being overwhelmed by any emotion. You need to be in that state that you're okay with being overwhelmed by emotion. And that all is developed during the deconstruction of your facade, deconstruction of all of the techniques that you use in your facade. Now by that stage, you've, you've had an awakening to sin. By that stage, you've now developed some humility. By that stage, you're used to experiencing emotion. By that stage, you're very focused on truth, aren't you? So those four key tools, you're very, you know, you're very aware of their need and necessity of development. So you, you already have an aspiration to develop them further, and you love them by this stage. You love those tools. Now, how I know most of you are not there yet is because when I start talking truth to most of you, it's like, get away from me. So this is an indication that you're not there yet because a person who's gone through their deconstruction of their facade loves the truth. They love working out things that are relating to their pain. They love to hear about these things. It's a part of their discovery of truth about themselves and they love that. They even, and by this stage, you also have a, a fair amount of compassion for yourself. Right, where you, where you actually love yourself. You love yourself enough to experience your emotions because that's a part of loving yourself. Being willing to experience all of your emotions is actually a part of loving oneself. So, so that would need to have been done. Now, remember the point, too, of doing all of that was to, to actually get to this, wasn't it? And to actually release that. So that's the fourth thing you would need to have done as well is released terror. So you'd have to have released terror. And remember, the other point of the facade was to desensitize yourself to pain. So what, as a part of this, you would have to have sensitized yourself to pain. In other words, you can feel the pain inside of you. And you can still feel that there's fears suppressing it, but you're at least feeling the pain inside of you. And the fears suppressing it are not the terror that you had. The terror you had is dealt with. That's gone, you've gone through a process of dealing with terror. And that process is going to look pretty bad to you. It's going to look pretty bad to others if anybody sees you doing it as well. And that would need to have been done. Now, can any of you honestly say all that's been done? Not really, right? Okay, so that means that you're not at the point of releasing your pain. And that's you can see that you're not, because if you examine releasing pain, there are some, there's some primary states that you're in in that place, and we'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. So that's what I must have done. Pretty clear? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you could say the majority of us still have a little faith. We have a little faith, not, not none. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't even be here at all, right? You've also been willing to start to look at yourself, right? But for most of you, that's not a compassionate process yet, right? You are not, not yet have compassion for yourself in that place. You're still attacking yourself and abusing yourself. And, and also there's a temptation in that place to abuse other people when they expose things in yourself as well. And that still frequently happens for the majority. So that means that the majority of us are there, right? And then there's that deconstruction process. And this is a beautiful process that God's designed as a part of your awakening to sin so that by the time you come out of that process, you've awakened. It's like... It's like somebody's got you, you know, in the morning, you know, when you're just real tired and you're just, you're just laying there and you're just about sleep. Somebody comes along and is shaking you awake. <laughs> ah, what, 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 what? And then that, there's that initial confusion and then, oh, yes, I'm awake. I'm here now. I'm here now. And, and that's really what you feel. It's like that emotionally. You start feeling like you're awake now. And before you were asleep or, or half dead <laughs> is, what you, is what you feel, right? So the deconstruction process is a very key, pivotal process for you to go through because that deconstruction process it helps you develop many tools that you're going to need. It helps you finish up having a, 
strong faith in the process, in God's process. You, you also, during this phase, has usually started to receive some God's love because God approves of each thing that you do in harmony with love. And you feel that after a while, once you have a longing. So you're starting to feel a little bit of God's love. That builds some faith as well. So your faith is now quite strong. Your humility is now quite strong. You are quite able to examine yourself. You don't need anybody else telling you much about yourself at all at this point. You can see things very clearly. You know that it's an emotional process. You're not resisting your emotional process. And so things are pretty open, so pretty humble. You're accepting all of your feelings. Very, very important place. And, and then, you remember, the whole point of doing that was to get to touch your terror and be able to feel your pain. And by this stage, you're really starting, you've, you've gone through your terror, and now you're pretty open to the pain and the false beliefs that are above it. Does that make sense? And these are still fears, they're not that, but they're not terrors anymore. They're fears, and because they are only fears and not terrors, they're pretty easy to feel in comparison with terror. So you've already gone through terror, so now feeling your fears is nowhere near as difficult as it was before. Does that make sense? You know what you've really done? All of that process has done something to you. You've done this. Become a child again. But not just a child anymore, but a child with awareness, a child with capacity to understand. So you're childlike without being childish. Does that make sense? You now have a capacity to understand. If you think about it, when you were a child, you were sensitive to pain, you, had, you, were, you were close to your terror, if not have feeling it a lot, you, there was a very little facade, and so therefore very little to accept. So by, this, by the time you've done this, you've really gotten back to that point. You've, you've chosen to undo the sin of parents, society, and your own. You've now had an awakening to sin. And those things are important to do, and they must be done before you can really release pain. Now, we might be able to get through to pain in certain times before then, but it's not going to be consistent. You're always going to be terrified. You're never going to feel it fully. You're probably going to have to revisit a lot of the pain you did feel in the past if you, if you got to it without feeling your terror and so forth. The majority of you believe, have believed yourself to be there, feeling pain, when actually you've yet to even do this. Let alone this. This is the area that you're going to find the most difficult. Remember the reason why you're going to find it the most difficult? Because it's a time when you've got little faith with a lot of stuff to deal with. And, and, and the motivation to deal with it is low. So we're resisting uh, dealing with it generally. Once you get to here, now the motivation to deal with pain is very high. You see the benefit of it. You know the benefit of it. You've, you've experienced the benefit of releasing pain associated with your own creations. And now you're able to allow yourself to go through the rest of the pain related to your own and society and parents' creations without too much resistance. Up here, remember, there was all the false beliefs that we were engaging and justifying that we had to release. Down here, it's going to be the cause of those beliefs going, going releasing. So we've become a child again. Wonderful. Wonderful. You'll feel... By that stage, you'll feel like a different person already. Uh, but the law of attraction hasn't changed markedly except for one primary area, and that is God's laws are not having to constantly remind you of your sin because you know what your sin is. So God's laws don't have to do it to you anymore. And you'll know that. You can feel that. You're aware of the, 
of the pain that's the result of the sin that you've engaged and others have engaged. And you're aware of that. God's laws, uh, you don't need God's laws to show you it anymore. Whereas up here you did. Because you're in denial and you're in your addictions. You needed God's laws to show you those things. If we go, Graham. <coughs> I was just wondering if I become a child again, like when I was f first a child, mm -hmm. what's then to stop all those emotional injuries entering me again? Well, you're also, remember I said you become childlike while you still got cognizance as an adult. And because you've now gone through the deconstruction and awakening to sin, you're not going to probably engage the sins again. Because you've had, you've had to experience the pain of what it felt like to engage them and have to deal with that. So that's why you said, I'm an aware child. Correct. I'm an aware child. I'm able to go, no, to sin. Whereas when I was a little child, I was unable to do that because I didn't have cognizance or awareness. But now that I'm this adult child, if you like, I've now got cognizance and awareness and therefore I know how to say no to sin. Thanks, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Peter, thanks. And then Ivana after that. Is it in the deconstruction phase that we break all our family ties with our parents and all of that? Is that when that really comes to the fore? Uh, not fully, but you're aware of how the family created pain. See, most of you at the moment are still justifying your parents' and society's behaviour towards yourself, right? You have a lack of love of self, you know, you've not got compassion for yourself. And so what you do is you finish up justifying to yourself how your parents have treated you and how society's treated you. And you still, to, in a fashion, really agree with that treatment. Right now, many of you are in that state where you sort of agree with that treatment. And you can see you agree because those of you who have children often treat your own children the same way as your own parents taught you. So that's, that indicates the agreement. Right? By this stage... You no longer agree, but you still haven't released all the pain associated with it. You're aware of the pain and okay. that it exists. Does that make sense? Yeah, Havana? Um, I was just wondering, um, so when we come to that place, are we going to actually feel similar to how we did at, um, like at when we were children? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, you're going to feel oppressed. Like you're going to feel in the world that we live in, it's very hard to live. You're going to be very sensitive to the pain that people cause you. You're going to be very sensitive to any pain that you cause somebody else and so forth. And you're also sensitive to your old pain that is stored inside of yourself. Yep. You're sensitive to that and you just let yourself, and, and this is what we'll talk about in a minute, what releasing the pain looks like. But you're so sensitive that when, it, when you notice it's there, it just comes out of you. There's no, and, no and need to even select it or, or to work it out. Yeah. And like with the positive sort of things, would we also like sort of express ourselves more like we used to when we were children? Yes, you, you'll also, and we'll talk about over the following two days, the last two days, how you'll also in this place start to see bits of your real self poking through now. Yeah. So you know how with your facade, you've basically hidden your real self with a curtain in front of it, right? And you're really just projecting an image of yourself in front of that curtain to the world and and once you get to through this stage you no longer desire to project an project an image of yourself to the world because because you've gotten rid of the 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 desire to do so because all, all of the desire to sin has been released from you or a lot of it, the desire to sin not all of it because the pain the desire to sin comes from the avoidance of pain not pain itself does that make sense so so the desire to sin has come from the really the, the justification for the addictions it, it causes the desire to sin. I'm getting a bit confused, but... <laughs> the pain is just pain. Yep. And it doesn't need to cause you to sin. Oh, like you were saying the other day. Like we were saying last two night. Two different people can be abused or something in the same way, but choose different... Correct. Yep. So okay. by this stage, you're seeing that the choices you made here, you've released the reasons why you wanted to choose that. Does that make sense? And as a result of that, you're sort of like a child now who has no desire to hurt anybody. Okay, and the, and that's the place where you're just willing to feel. You're you willing feel. to feel other people's hurt of you and your yep. own hurt that's inside of yourself, yep. and your own hurt of yourself because that's where lack of love of self is, 
but you're not willing to hurt someone else in order to avoid it anymore. Yeah. Okay. Up, up here, you were willing to do that. Down here, you're not willing to do that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Thank you. Your will has been developed now in the opposite direction than the will had been developed in the reversal issue. You see, if you look at how the will has been developed in your diagram, and most of you I notice have a printout of that diagram, you'll see the associated will development of that particular diagram. So here you see the will being used negatively in each case to create the next layer. Well, what we've done is we've now used our will to deconstruct each layer which has meant engaging a lot of very positive will-based choices that we've made. And as we've done that, we've learnt a lot of things and we've learnt the, we've learnt the destructiveness of sin. So, we, so it's highly unlikely we'll want to engage it. And when we do, if we ever do, because we still feel some pains occasionally and we, and we unfortunately sin occasionally, what happens is we're, we're gutted by it. We feel terrible about it in that place. And it's not a self-punishment. It's just that we feel terrible because we're so sensitive to each pain that results from a sin we've created. Because we're sensitive to it now, before we weren't. So we're like this childlike, sensitive individual who now has awareness about sin, rather than not knowing, not understanding, not knowing what the causes of pain are. Wonderful place to be, actually. <laughs>